Here we go. Hey, hey, it's Copy Who in 4K. This is your host, the one and only Arthur Fonzarelli. Not really. I'm Paul, the producer, and I've I've used that expression to refer to myself doing podcasts for quite a long while. And it's glad I'm glad and grateful to be feeling like a producer again. Doing a little show like this is enough for me to feel like I'm a producer. And you can't say I'm not when you watch. It's kind of like the guys who do their little podcasts that single women make fun of in their basements. Suddenly you watch what I'm doing with all the gimmicks, the rise and everything. You can't be like, dude, you're not, you're just silly. You're being silly. It's no, it's not silly. Uh, I heard from someone the other day. I got a comment on one of my videos I posted up from the last show I did. I took a clip. It was the one with Andrew Tate. And especially his brother um, mispronouncing et cetera instead of et cetera. He says, et cetera, because he's so brilliant. (laughs) And um, someone put a comment on that video of me making fun of him that the video is embarrassing. And I was like, is it embarrassing for me? Because I didn't say et cetera. I said et cetera. I spelled it out. I understand Latin, but somebody's, everybody's a snob in a different way. And you just can't please everyone in the world. If there's anything I've learned from being uh, someone out there aspiring to have notoriety, you're always going to have people who don't like what you do. And then you'll have people who do like what you do. Let's see how bright this is over here. I was working on this. I got a little bit of a large, large, late start today because I was working on exposure for each of the camera settings. I have a new camera today that I will debut in just a little bit, probably during the rise. Um, And so I was configuring these cameras a little bit. The exposure was a little off and some some of these screens were a little wonky. I still think this copy who behind me here appears a little wonky. Uh, So I'm gonna have to do something with that. Well, I'll just have to keep configuring. It's a process, people. I haven't been pleased with how this camera matches the camera that faces the Rise TV. It's the Rise TV now. Yeah, that's how I refer to it. It's the Rise TV, the main monitor, the big kahuna. My money shot is another way I like to refer to it, but they're all money shots. I'm trying to make them all money shots. Even the new camera, you'll see other parts of the room you haven't seen before, a little bit of a wider angle, but... um. There are two more cameras I want to squeeze on this system eventually. One to be on another person and one to get a, an angle where it's the two of us if I'm speaking to someone in here. But that's not, that's not happened yet uh, for various reasons. I have to digest this little by little. And, that, and the decorations are going to be a problem. Right now I have a big blanket, a black blanket on that wall covering it up because the white wall reflects into the TV and it's just like a big no-no for me. I'm trying to get it all sorted out one little piece at a time. I'll build out this room uh, more and more on the other side and it'll come into focus over time, literally and figuratively. How do you like that, ladies and gentlemen? Aw, shucks. I was going to look something up. Uh, I guess I'll save that for another show, but I had an idea of something I wanted to do. That's all right. Um, what do I have on my notes? I'm just going to move forward. So the new segment that I have, the true story segment, I'm going to be doing that after the, uh, after the rise, because that's just how I want to do it. Because sometimes during that, I'm going to have videos I want to play. And so it's more convenient for me. I have more versatility in order to get this TV up, you know, gratuitous special effect. And then like, I will be able to play videos on it as I'm talking about true stories. And I have a little true story coming up later today, which, cool. Lately, we've had so much fucking rain, it's driving me bananas. It's driving me age shit. All the rain, all the rain. I wish I had a rain sound effect right now. Hold on. Let me just see. As I So it's raining like crazy here, and because my dad runs a commercial property, I'm always like, is the roof all right? When it's totally moist, it makes me nervous. Um... <sighs> oh yeah, here we go. I know uh, this is what I'm talking about right here, okay? All right, that's not bad. Um, so it's been raining like crazy the last few days. We haven't had much in the way of thunder and lightning, 
But it's just been so much moisture that it's unbelievable. Even here at my house, I had to get up when it stopped uh, so that I could unclog some fucking drains. Because I do stuff like that. I know you see me as this cool wannabe celebrity on here, but I do regular shit like that. And I'm not ashamed. I get up and I, I fix my own toilets, people. I know that's frightening to hear. Uh, actually, it shouldn't be. If anyone is uh, of a right mind with some kind of uh, dignity and with some kind of honor, they're like, I respect a man who can fix his own toilet. Not like those rich Rockefellers. Been continuing to read that book. It's interesting, but I won't bore you with the details of that today. Uh, some people just whine too much. Do you know that? Um, and I'm one of those people, but sometimes I'm doing it in jest. Like, years ago, I used to make late-night stops at 7-Eleven <laughs> to pick up nasty-ass snacks that are not good for me, eating them late at night. I'm serious, like 11, 12 at night, stuff like that. And so one of the things I used to go in for were these carrot cakes they have, these delectable carrot cakes, probably uh, the ingredients sourced by none other than Monsanto or something like that. I used to go in for these carrot cakes, and this was way before lockdown, this was like a decade ago, and I used to be a whiner, jokingly a whiner. Sometimes you go in, you know, you want this carrot cake. You have your mind set on the carrot cake. You go in, it's not fucking there. Why isn't the carrot cake there, I'd say to myself. And then uh, once I was with a friend, and whenever I'm with anyone else and something like that happens when I don't have something I want anyway, it was very true that when I would go in for my carrot cake and there was no carrot cake, I would exclaim with a serious... Indignation! Society has failed me! <laughs> I, I laugh because it's like, wow, uh, I've just decided to up the ante on everything here. It's like, um, I did a show, uh, when was it, like 10 days ago on a Friday? I was like, yeah, I did a really good job. I was over the top. Then I, then I drank a drink with five nanograms of THC in it, and then I got all like out of it, and I didn't like the way I felt. And I was like, dude! I'm not liking um, this show. It's like, I'm so superficial. I hate myself. And then like, I, I, so I watched it after and I was like, I like that. And then I drank five nanograms of fucking THC in a, in a CBD drink. And I was like, I hate myself. I hate this. It's superficial. It's stupid. I don't want to do it. I'm so lame. And the same thing happens when I, when I get high, all of a sudden I'm like, I hate TV. It's like, I love Cobra Kai. Right now, I'm like, I enjoy watching the show Cobra Kai. That's cool. But once I get high, I'm like, fuck, this fucking sucks, and it's so shallow. Turn it off. Turn the TV off. And that's the way I was with myself. And it was weird how weed gave me that weird self-loathing the other day. I figured I'd tell you that. But when I go into 7-Eleven, and they don't have what I need, as a joke, I exclaim, society has failed me. That's what I do. Um, yeah. So that's just it. Uh, where am I along the lines of my notes here? Let's continue on. I dreamt a few nights ago that my... And this was a disturbing dream. I, I, I bring up my dreams to you guys. I ought to have a little bumper to bring up my dreams. You know, just to make the show a little more dynamic. Always push that uh, the envelope with that dynamic edge with the show. Um, I dreamt that my house was full of aggressive, big, poisonous snakes. Large and small, poisonous snakes. Aggressive snakes coming after me. Like on the shelves, I'm walking through in different rooms on the floor. There's one big six to eight foot snake coming after me, like slithering at me. And I'm like, fuck, get away from me. Fucking hate this snake. So I dreamt that John from the Kava Bar, one of the, the Kava bartenders, Kava tender? I don't know if that's what they call themselves, but I dreamt he was here at my house. And he was helping me stuff snakes in trash bags. He was evidently a snake handler and grabbing the snake by its long tail and and throwing it in a bag for me, which I was grateful for because I did not it was a it was an unsettling dream. And so I don't know what's the deal when I have dreams about snakes. I'm like, I, I'm so suspicious. Just like I was gonna say, I'm suspicious of the rain. I'm suspicious of the weather. Whenever the weather's bad, I'm like, is this rain natural? Is this rain poisoned? The fucking bushes everywhere are dying! What's with the dying bushes?! I'm serious. I'm fucking disturbed by the weather. I'm suspicious of the weather. I'm one of those people. You can be like, Conspiracy theorist! And I'm like, You're fucking clueless! Wake the fuck up! Oh, that was kind of cool. I rang the bell at the same time as I hit that. 
See, so I did I did happen to know to my uh, dad earlier that I will be unavailable for a good while to come. And so I'm going to continue to be unavailable because right now my mind is on this and I cannot pause this to do that when we did an hour and a half of that earlier. And I did say that I would be unavailable and this is the same time that I do this every single week and I want to continue what I'm doing because I like what I'm doing. Anyway, off with that. And um, yeah, I'm suspicious of the weather. The weather, no good. The weather, suspicious. Dying bushes. What's up with the dying bushes everywhere? I not like the dying bushes. Someone trying to kill all the people in the world, and in the process, they salt the ground with the fucking shit they spray in the sky, and I'm freaking out, you see? Yeah, I'm sticking my ass off right now, and I'm enjoying myself. So some, it's like, what's the fine line? Uh, someone's gonna like what I do, someone's not gonna like what I do, and I can't help what you think, honestly. So, uh, I want to just come over here like this and come back here like this. Pour myself a little drink and do the same little ritual I do because the rituals are what make things a success. If you are loyal to your rituals, then they result in good thing for you. I'm not making fun of anyone and I'm not being racist when I say that. I just have a million different accents. Sometimes when I default into a sticky accent, my mind is thrilled and my mind is spewing creativity. I slept fairly well last night. I just had a good lunch of uh, pizza, leftover pizza from last night coming from the garlic knot. was good, had pepperoni and sausage on it. It was yummy. And I liked the spice after I finished eating. It was tasty. It was yummy. And, and then I love to chase it with sperm water, which is, of course, a cloud-colored CBD that I take. I dose myself with CBD and I'm not, I haven't been taking, uh, what do you call the damn things that keep you hydrated? Now I'm forgetting a word and I can't ask Siri what the hell it is because I don't even know how to articulate to Siri in a way that she will just give me a direct answer instead of saying, here's what I found on the, I didn't ask you what you want to fucking find on the web, bitch. Give me the answer. You know, chat GPT is way cooler and more helpful than you, bitch. Hey, hey, S hey, Siri, you're a bitch. I won't respond to that. You know what, bitch? I think when you say I won't respond to that, that is your way of responding to that. So, Siri, fuck you, bitch. I won't respond to that. Same thing. She won't even get witty, and she won't even say, come on. Uh, she just used to be so much more interesting. Your personality used to be so much more interesting. <gasps> bitch! <laughs> I want to ring this and hit that button at the same time. Let's try. Okay. Bitch. Oh, no, that didn't work. Try again. Bitch. There we go. That's the way to go. When you hit those, hit those two at once, a little more dynamic. It's a little more. It's like it's like playing more than simple bar card chords on the guitar and you're finger picking it instead of just going da 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 downstroke, boring strum, whatever. I think it's time to move on to... The best part of the show, where I will debut something, a new visual for you right now. I don't know how this is going to go. I rehearsed it a tiny bit last night, and we'll see. Well, let me get a sip of this first. Do you hear the leather? Do you hear that as well as I do? The leather is like... Uh, oh, and one more thing I don't like. These, I want to just have a black leather jacket that doesn't have these white stripes. I wouldn't mind the white stripes as much as if they were on this, if they were on both sides. But when it's on one side, it gives me a little bit of a feeling of fascism. And that's just me. I don't like it. On one side, I don't like it. I don't. Shut up. It's fascist. Um, <laughs> I don't know who I'm telling to shut up. And I am in another one of those weird moods today. So far, I feel good about what I'm doing. I'm going to get this next phase of the show ready to go for you to enjoy. And I, I it's just, I, I have the routine down fairly well in certain respects. You know, back up with the fader. And I will zoom it out like that. And I'll come down there with that. Then I grab my phone. And I walk through every step. Because this is a one-man producer type deal, people. Yeah. My friends, welcome to the program. Rise. Did you see that view from up there? Rise. 
I love improving everything for you. And it's just one more thing. Hello! Hello! See the TV going up over here? That's what I'm doing right now. And back to here. Dynamic, I tell you. Constant and never-ending improvement. Ah God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too. Righty, oh. I like that new view up there. That's just one more thing. That was success. Those who say it's lame, I think you're jealous. Those who say I copied you, I think I copied you and made it better. Suck on that, Buster. Whee! All right, let's come back over here, turn the lights back on. And I will cut that sound off for you really quick. Get rid of this over here. Close that off. Come up here and go Shazam! Welcome to Copy Who, everyone. I'm only 16 minutes in, but golly, have I been having a high-energy show so far. I definitely have the energy level. I'm in a good mood today. Didn't check my email. Didn't hear from Parasites. My dad did try to interrupt me a moment ago, but that's okay. I, I imagine he needs something. I will respond to him promptly after I'm done here. I will get back to him. Very well. Very well. Very well. Very well. Very well. I know what I want to go to next. You know what it is? It is time for True Stories. Peasy's True Stories. Paul the Producer's True Stories. Whatevs, people. Whatevs. Whatevs. And I like that better. You know what's different about doing that right now? With that screen that I come to right here? I'll go to it again for you right here. See that? It'll play that same whole thing again. So now you see the TV up. The Rise TV is up, and I like that much better. And I knew that was going to happen. I knew that the, the angle was going to change on that, and that wasn't correct, and so I'm going to have to remember to check that every time before I start, too, because there are a million things on my set list of things to do. Anyway, this is True Stories. Welcome to True Stories. So you know what uh, my problem was when I was a little kid was? I was a total pyromaniac for a good while. And I'm glad I grew out of that because, you know, if you grow up and you still have these tendencies, especially if it's pyromania, no, n it didn't, I wasn't a pyromaniac because I liked listening to Def Leppard, Def Leppard's album Pyromania. I was a pyromaniac. Maybe more so because of Motley Crue. I would do crazy shit with fire, okay? And um, uh, one of my cousins, I believe he's watching or listening at some point to this, and he, uh, he gave me the idea when I was little. He mentioned something about throwing gasoline on snow and lighting it on fire. I thought, shit, instead of shoveling the driveway when my dad would be like, go and shovel the driveway, because he'd say it just like that. And, and I would go out and shovel the driveway and be like, fuck this. So I started pouring s gasoline on top of snow. And it did not work to melt it. So the crazy thing is you pour gasoline on top of snow and you don't realize that it's lit. But I expected like the snow just to be like, wah, to melt away underneath the, the flame of burning gasoline within snow. But that did not work. So you're thinking, you can't even see the flame. And so the flame fucking doesn't even register on, on your eyes. You can't hear it. You can't see it. You can't feel it. And so I'm like, fuck, there's not enough gasoline on the snow. And I keep dumping gasoline on the snow, not realizing that it is burning. And this fucking, uh, the fucking gas can lit on fire because the fire in the snow burning that you could not see or hear went all the way up to the gas can. And then so... Gas can was on fire, and I'm thinking, oh my god, I'm going to explode. I threw the fucking snow on top of the gas can, and somehow I think I extinguished the burning flame. It worked. It didn't explode, but this is not the only part of this true story. Of course, like I was saying, I was a, a pyromaniac, and I think I was badly influenced by none other than Motley Crue at this time of my life. And uh, let me show you this over here. And here's another good reason why. Let me just turn the sound down on that completely for you. I will bring it all the way near the end right there. And I will go like, voila, for you. I will go, 
I will go to this over here and bring that in. And you see over here these crazy rockers and stuff, shit like that. At the end of this video, okay, this is, um, she's got the looks that kill, and I'm not playing the sound because I don't want to have the copyright issues. So this is that right there, a burning pentagram. That right there made me want to go out in the street and try that. So I would go out in the street, and I would dump gasoline in the street, and I would light it on fire. And I tried making a pentagram, but it's very hard to be exact when you're working with gasoline. Okay, that's the next video. That's not what I wanted here. Let's go back to the one before and come back over here to this, all right? Because that's, that's really the whole point of this whole thing right here is to show you this. So I'm going to play that back in slow-mo because I feel like it. Playback speed. One quarter is fast. Radio. Okay, so see that? Uh, it inspired me to go out and light things on fire. So one time my friends and I, I was about 14-ish years old, give or take a year, we decided, hey, we're going to make a movie, an action movie. And my little friend, Eric, at the time, he had a like a little analog kind of camera thing we used in the backyard of my friend Mike, who lived across the street from us. We were all friends. And in the backyard, they didn't have grass. They just had, it was an unfinished yard. And so, um, so we decided to make this action film that was heavy on the fire and not so much other kinds of action. But I was the wild man with the gasoline and I was dumping gasoline on the fucking entire movie set. I remember we got the film back for this and we couldn't discern anything. It was all blurry fire. The whole thing was just blurry fire. It was not as beautiful as this kind of work of art that you see here with Motley Crue, but... It was a blur of fire, and so I'm dumping ga like gasoline all over the fucking dirt in their backyard, and it's like I don't know if shit can survive in their fucking dirt now because I dumped so much of that in in their backyard. I I mean like, and so we were so worried. Actually, um, it smelled so badly like gasoline. At the end of the day, we were afraid that his parents were going to be very pissed off. It's like you went in their backyard and it smelled like a fucking gas refinery. But as I was dumping the gasoline back there, crazy Paul dumping gasoline on the fucking fire of the movie set, movie set, quote unquote, loosely termed, more like kids being crazy with fire on film. It was like the, the modern day equivalent of trying to go... Uh, <laughs> We, we couldn't put it online, but we wanted notoriety for the fire that broke out. The fire fucking ran. As I was dumping with the gasoline onto the open flame, the fire fucking ran up the to the gas tank again, and the gas tank was on fire, and we're all, like, screaming, freaking out. I jumped over the fence to the neighbor's yard, um, ran to their house, grabbed the hose, and the neighbor's like, what the fuck are you doing? And so I grab their hose, turn the water, and then like I'm dousing the flames um, over the fence, hoping that an explosion doesn't occur. And so there, there was really so much smell of gasoline that my friend Mike, I recall him being extremely pissed off that I did that. And I deserved that. But it's a memory, and the whole purpose of the memory, you know, we have that memory, and that's lovely to look back at something like that and be like, oh, yeah, cool, that happened. Uh, but really the, the special part for me, pour moi, is that years later I get to tell that story here and, and entertain all of you by what a crazy pyromaniac I was. And that's it today. Everybody, this has been True Stories by Paul. Let me see. Video source. What is this? Elgato Face Cam Pro to that one. Okay, that one's better. That's what I wanted as. All right, back to this. That was True Stories, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> I keep, like, dinging that by accident. Uh, I hope that was interesting. I hope that was somewhat interesting. Like, I have another story I've been keeping on the back burner of some crazy shit that happened to me when I was younger. I will watch that clip later and see if it's worth cutting out to hang up on my Clips channel. By the way, if you haven't seen... Now I have a clips channel, and I've kind of gotten in more of a routine of putting things up there, shorter clips of the show. And if 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 you're, if you're watching this whole show, I don't know why you want to watch clips, but sometimes it's you subscribe to that channel by going to the handle on YouTube at Copy Who Clips, all one word, lowercase, on YouTube. Okay, that's the handle for that channel, and I would appreciate anyone 
who goes over there and subscribes to that too and likes on those videos. One of the videos I did in the last couple of days, I was just saying this earlier, he did not like what I what I did to I guess he's an Andrew Tate fan and he didn't like that I was making fun of the Tate brothers, Tristan and Andrew Tate. Too bad, Tate. You know, it's not my problem. You don't like what I say, bro. Uh, I'm being derisive. It's it's true you're being derisive with the word bro now, but I will accept it because it is it is in, with the intent of being satirical. And to be honest with you, it's okay to be a little bit derisive towards the Tate brothers because, you know, they are intelligent, but they do lack a certain type of refinement. Yes, you're right. Both you and I have more refinement. Don't you agree, Dr. Peterson? Yes, I would agree, Paul, but... Uh, it's true that you do have a, a high degree of cognitive development. However, you do get a little silly and fuck you, Jordan. Don't you make fun of me, Jordan. All right, all right, all right. I realize I went over that, but that's just what I'm about. I'm a little more snobby and snooty than you in high society. But I know that we could both sit down and have a very good dialogue with one another and enjoy one another's company very much. I would agree with you, Jordan. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. I'm on a fucking carbohydrate high right now because I had fucking pizza for lunch. Oh, I would never articulate it like that. I might refer to it in a much more intelligent way by saying the the pizza that I consumed uh, boosted my carbohydrate levels in my metabolism to give me a very strong mental high for the moment, but we have to hurry up and we have to be hasty before this energy crashes at the end of it. That would seem to make more sense. Yes, that is exactly how you would articulate it compared to me, because even though I'm a wordsmith, I'd be a little more silly when I say it, and you're just, you're very formal like that. And that's kind of your charm, to be honest with you. Something else happened this week. I thought it was interesting. This is not a video that I want to play for you, but it is something I want to bring to your attention because I find it interesting, okay? There is this um, New York Post article that was reviewing... Uh, the, the headline is, uh, it's about whatever, and it's about making women look sti- Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, just one moment. Bear with me, my loves. Bear with me, chat APT. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Jordan, for introducing that for me. Making women look dumb is a disturbing new podcast trend. Uh, but that's not a fair thing to say. Why is this now? Now this is not the fucking, you bastards. You bastards! I'm trying to fix this so it works right, but you keep switching my camera sources. I want to save those fucking camera sources. And when you switch them up, it makes me feel fucking stupid because it's not how I want my show, you fucking bloody assholes. Ecam, fix your motherfucking shit. Now back to the reg regularly scheduled program. All right. Making women look dumb is a disturbing new podcast, Ryan. And this was especially directed at um, Brian from... Fuck, this is going to be hard to read. Let me blow it up a little bit. Can I? Here we go. Make that a little bigger for you, and especially for me reading. Can't see. Get rid of this stupid ad. Your ad's in my face. Fuck you, ad. A podcast with hundreds of thousands of subscribers and followers across online platforms is stoking the flames. By the way, I think he has 4 million subscribers. So are you trying to diminish him for some reason? You're bringing attention to him. So you're critical of him, and yet it's going to bring people to whatever to see it. Whatever, hosted by Brian Atlas. Masquerades is a dating talk show. It's not masquerading as anything. He just puts pe women honestly on display who, who kind of make jackasses out of themselves. And they it's not making women look stupid as much as it is demonstrating something very sad about what young women have become. A lot of them, not all of them. Of course, there are some great young women out there, I'm sure. But it does cater to a segment of women that is not super honorable, in my opinion. Oh, F girls. You know what that is. That's me being pretending to be like a, uh, a hip young person. Oh, F girls. Only fans girls. I'm not a particular... I'm not a pay pig, and I'm never going to be a pay pig, okay? But So he does have dipshits on his show. This is the perfect example, one of them right here. It is... Um, what's his name? fucking destiny i don't get why that guy's gaining traction he's not that interesting to me he speaks way too fucking fast and i don't know i think this is brian here and i do appreciate his sense of humor here by putting um what's his name there what oops let me zoom in on that actually more closely brian's got 
that red ass hair and it's looking dumb. <laughs> That's so dumb looking. And I guess he's making fun of Destiny by do that. So I actually say kudos to you for making fun of Destiny and his dumb ass blue hair. Blue hair dumb. Especially on a man. Blue hair dumb. If you if you um if you made a goatee red, I could deal with that. If you bleached your goatee blonde, I could deal with that. If you bleached your hair blonde and had a red goatee, I could deal with that. But blue hair, no, dude, no, dude, no, no. <laughs> oh man. Okay, more substance. Let's get let's get going here. In one episode, the panelists, who are all women, rate themselves as tens. And yeah, dude, I have seen that a million times. This demonstrates that women are dumb because they will fucking rate some hideous woman a 10, and then they'll take a regular cool-looking dude and be like, he's a four. I've seen it a million times online. Something's really up with the backwards way women and people are thinking about men in today's day and age. Um, in, another, in another show, Atlas grills the panelists on their body counts or how many people they've been intimate with and is met with resistance. It doesn't matter to me, but it matters to you guys. Yeah, it does matter. You know... How am I supposed to live up to uh, you screwing a bunch of hot guys? Uh, how am I supposed to screw you with my micro penis after you screw a bunch of hot guys? Ladies, seriously. That's not fair. Let's get real here, shall we? Um, with While well, OnlyFans model Nicolette Nicole, that's a little redundant, admitted that her appearance on the podcast was to bolster her own following, she told Vice that the cli clips were definitely chosen to create controversy and make her look dumb and shame her. Well, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to honor a bunch of chicks who do porno, but oh, to be fair, there are some OnlyFans women who do it. I guess they're just pretty and they're on there and they're not making hardcore pornography. And I don't understand why a man would subscribe to that either. Simpy, it's like simp only fans is what the stupid service should be called. Sucks ass, in my opinion. Um, Witter off whatever often promotes videos from conservative commentator Ben Shapiro and champions disgraced internet personality Andrew Tate. Oh, I like how you refer to Andrew Tate as disgraced. It's just this fucking propaganda against people all the time. Washington Post. Is this owned by Jeff Bezos? Swell. Fucking swell. Anyway, continuing on a little bit, Tate has been accused of sexual assault and physical abuse after serving time in a Romanian prison on charges of rape, trafficking, and organized... I don't know that all that's true about him, even though he, he, he has intelligent things he says, and he also has a personality online that could get you in trouble because it's, it's definitely over the top. Anyway, so whatever... Um, I would say to Brian not to sweat this. It's good for what he's the sensational show that he's doing. I'm jealous that he's getting mentions. I'm not getting any mentions in the Washington Post. Maybe I should have dumb hot chicks on, and then I can be part of this trend that they mention. Uh, but in any case, let's move on from this. I will bring you over here. I, I think I want to say the next clip I have here is also from whatever. I will cut the sound out on it really quick. I um, Oh, wait, hold up. Do we have sound when this? Well, I'll find out in a moment. We shall, we shall find out in a moment if I have sound on here. Um, so, play. No, there is no sound. The sound is now off. Okay. Experience, life experience. Mm -hmm. A lot happens in your 20s, and it, things level out. Getting when you ran get through older. and baggage and trauma. <laughs> yeah, really? a lot. yeah. There's people I mean, with men don't want that. Don't like so, men. Just to comment, she's actually very beautiful. I couldn't do this without not making commentary on her beauty. Like a lovely head of hair, beautiful face. And um, let me just hear more of what she's saying, real quick. Don't want that. So, in so a well, then why aren't they wifing no. us early? Why are they running around town? Like, you know, if they don't want us ran through and bag into trauma, why are they like wait? They're waiting till like how are we so are so at twenty? I should be looking for forty year olds that are ready to settle. Not like I don't know. Hey now, um, I'm down to date the thirty year olds. You, Not necessarily. I don't know how you. It sounds like just a losing battle all around. If you look at it, it's like all the responsibilities. But like, it, on it, the it depends on if you're a wife. All wives are found, always. If you're 20 years old and you're a wife, you're going to be found, Yeah. period. Right. It's kind of weird because I hear that girl 
putting the responsibility on men, like, why aren't they wifing us up? And like that guy just said, I think it's the perfect point. If you're worthy of marrying, some guy is going to be a guy with value and pursuing you. So is she feeling not pursued at 20? Honey, I will hang out with you. If you want to come to Colorado, you can hang out with a bald 50-year-old who will show you a good time. I will give you all X number of inches of my micro penis. I'm not even going to admit how big my penis is. It's not, it's not super above average. I say that without revealing too much. Okay. Keep going, Brian. I, I do enjoy your podcast. I I personally don't care if you sell um what do you call it? Pocket pussies. I don't uh I don't plan on doing that here myself. But um I know that uh what's his name? Sovereign Bra was having a little bit of an issue you with you doing that and and that's cool. He's a man of high moral standards and I appreciate uh him doing what he thinks is right. Good for him. Um so l- here's a clip of of Jetta Dizzle, and I don't think, okay, the volume is up on that, and I, I had a timeline on this I wanted to go to because there was something specific she's talking about, so let me just get the timeline on that really quick. Three minutes, 15 seconds. Three minutes, 15, okay, we're there. And so back over here with, yep. Whee! Hold up with that, and we go, boom, and we hear what she has to say. That's not a good look on you, by the way, and I realize... This is just a screenshot at the moment. <laughs> Not the best look on her, but that's because it's a moment in time. Watch. One thing okay. was really interesting better. that came up the other See, so much better once I... Oh, so she has that ring light in her eyes. Ooh, look at that. That's tripping me out. Ooh, you're tripping me out. <laughs> Uh, half of this is just me amusing myself and you have to live with it too bad you don't like it if you don't like it what are you doing here anyway all right back to the eyes tripping me out on jedediah day though that affects and relates to all of you is somebody asked me about my audience and they said i'm your audience what what is your audience like I think they were asking for the demographics, like how many men, how many women. Um, I am one of the men. Oh, that's even trippier when you're looking to the side and you have the rings in your eyeballs. Look. That's the problem with those ring lights. They're too obvious like that. So yeah, your face is lit well, but they make your eyes look freaky like an alien. What is the age range? My response had nothing to do with that. What I said was, I have the best audience on the planet. And... I Thank genuinely- you. Um, you know, I want to point something out about Jedediah before I forget. I really like this woman. She's one of the few women out there where I get a consistent, sensible feeling from her. She's so common sense based for a woman that she stands out amongst women these days. She's like one of the greatest female role models, in my opinion. Like, God almighty, seriously. And And actually, the point I'm driving to here is... She doesn't get the YouTube downloads, nor does she get the views and the likes on her Twitter that I think she deserves being such a standout, honorable woman. And and I do have this history on here of always, like, speaking kindly about Jedediah. And, of course, I'm attracted to her, but that's not my point. Uh, my point is, she's a great woman, And her audience seems too small for me. Like, why the fucking hell does um, Airhead Pearl have so much more of a following than Jedediah? Jedediah is so much more worthy, in my opinion, in my estimation. Like, Pearl is much more dingy and... and uh, Dingy. She's just fucking dingy. Pearl, you're dingy. And Jedediah spews a lot of wisdom. I like that that i appreciate every single one of you so much oh wait wait do you really mean that about me now your eyes are closed now you look like you're puckered up for a kiss and i am just like it's so tempting for me to do my shtick (laughs) with that let me just put my finger over your let me uh see better what i'm doing by going let's brush your teeth (laughs) spit it out just like they do in the dentist office 
Now she's like sleeping. Some of you write me, you go on all different outlets and you'll write me saying, Jed, I've been a fan since The View, or Jed, I love your work on Fox News, I miss you on Fox and Friends, or some you of you on the on YouTube. And you're, you watch all your stuff on YouTube and have been for a really long time and you just kind of fell in love with the content regardless of where you know me from. And then there's always people that are like, I remember you back at The Blaze. And I'm like, whoa, that's a Way long back memory. When. So the like The Blaze, that's with Glenn, Glenn Beck? I didn't know that before she mentioned it in this video that she worked for The Blaze, which is perfectly fine. I used to hate Glenn Beck back in the day. And then all of a sudden, you know life changes when you're liberal and you hate Glenn Beck, and then all of a sudden you go, oh my God! I agree with him about almost everything, and I've completely flipped sides because if you are a rational person, you leave the left when they go bananas, apeshit bananas crazy, and you come to the right because you value things like rationality and common sense. So I think it's kind of cool and interesting that she used to work for The Blaze. I think Tommy, Tommy Learn, is that her name? Hot blonde chick. She used to work for The Blaze also. I think that's where she got her start. It was my first job ever. But what I want you to know is that w the reason I do what I do is because of you. This isn't about me. You're doing it this for me? About <laughs> yeah, it is about you. I have to tell you, it, how could it not be about you? It's a percentage about you. It's a blend about you. There are like, it's a concentric circle. One of the circles is about you, and the other is about the audience, and they overlap. So it's about both of us. We get something out of you. And you like imparting your wisdom. So don't say it's not about you. Don't start lying to me now. This is about all of you. And I'm so grateful for every single one of you. Um, and the messages I get, I see them. I try to respond to as many as I can. But um, I just wanted you to know that because it came up and I haven't had a chance to say it on air. So just know that you're all on my mind all the time. And I'm so grateful. Well, um... <laughs> and not I'm not in your mind all the time. That's overly generous. Okay. You're not. I'm not. Like, okay, I understand. You appreciate your audience. Okay. But that statement doesn't make any sense to me. How can I be in your mind all the time? Over here, look at me. Look at me. Am I in your mind all the time? I doubt it. <laughs> me personally? Okay, I'm being a little narcissistic because obviously you don't mean that literally you're thinking about Paul. You're thinking about everyone. You're thinking about your whole audience. But when you say audience and when you're talking to me on a 65-inch LED screen, I tend to think you're talking about me a little bit. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just being a little too self-absorbed right now. It's because I have to fill time. I have to be silly right now and fill time. I probably didn't pack enough into this show today. This is not my last video, by the way. But let's continue. And, and I'm sticking, but I still very much like Jedediah. I'm so grateful. So grateful. I really can't say it enough um, for every single one of you. So... Now, it sounds like you're talking about me when you say that. And and you got that funny look on your in your eyes again. It's funny when you pause. You can get someone and it, with an unflattering look... And it's so easy. Look at that. <sighs> um, what's up with your eye? Oh, that is the ring again coming underneath there. I thought she had something hook up, hooking off of her eyelash there. Continue, please, Jedediah. New York, like I said, stay on the socials if you want. Follow me there. Twitter is mostly politics, but you know you can check out what I'm doing over there. Thank you again for everything you do to support what I do. Um, I couldn't do what Everything I, did I do I to support to. what you do is basically I watch your videos, I like them sometimes, and I make comments on your video. I, this is what I do for commentary with you. That's all I do for you. I don't have a Jedediah t-shirt. I don't have... Uh, I was going to get really na say something nasty, but I don't want to do that with her. Because this, again, this is the reason I do this. The reason I talk about the stuff I talk about is because... This is pretty self-aggrandizing. <laughs> this look, I keep get, I keep stopping on the funniest facial expressions. Now you're looking at the side like, ah. if that were your permanent look, I would, I would be very sad for you. But thank goodness it's not. Thank goodness that's just camera trickery and that's just a momentary expression in time. I want to help people out there. But let's see how you look in slow mo, shall we? I'm just in this mood today to do this. Playback speed. We'll, we'll slow you down to half and see if you sound drunk. 
And um, <laughs> for whatever reason, God you gave sound me drunk. the gift of a microphone. They gave us all. He gave us all that gift. If we want a micro, every anybody can get a microphone and start talking into a microphone. I truly didn't pound the pavement for it. <laughs> so I was always it's like, "Why sound are you drunk? doing this to me when somebody uh, else?" Can I buy you another drink? Pound the pavement for it, but I think it's because <laughs> all right, I'm a little too amused. Tell the truth. I'm abused and amused. I need to go back to um, regular speed. I just don't care. Maybe because I didn't have. Let's slow it way down. I wasn't hungry. Like, oh, oh my god. Okay. 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 I think this job, you know. So I'm just gonna tell you the truth, um, and I hope that that brings value to your life. So that's just my little mini rant on the side, mm. <laughs> letting you know that I'm going to New York. And, I don't know um, what that, that means. I moved and like some you're going to New York. Like you said, you moved, but you're saying it like it's in the future that you're going. So you're saying past tense that you moved. I don't know. Are you in New York living there? What's the deal? This is a very pleasant moment. Days. And just remember <laughs> that while I'm gone, first of all, don't fall into any matrix traps. Come on. We, we've been through this before. You know. Avoid the matrix traps. Secondly, stay healthy. I will. Um, for you. Stay happy. All right, we'll try. Stay optimistic. That's hard. Tough. Be gracious. Don't All these things are tough. The Lord above for every single day. I try. And if any for the good stuff. Goes wrong, just blame Delhi because that's what I do. Sorry, Delhi. You know I love you, but what? It's the truth. Who? So I will see you guys very soon. And wait, that was pleasant. Let's go back to another pleasant face with her. <laughs> that's not okay. The smile is pleasant, but the eyes are like. Okay, now that's pleasant. Is that not pleasant? That's pleasant. I like her there. Thank you, Jedediah. And I'm not joking around when I say that. I do appreciate Jedediah. So long, babe. I really like her. I like her a lot. I want to give her a hand. Yes. We love you. We love Jedediah. We're going to keep coming back to Jedediah. Oh, love that lady. I have one more video. Am I going to be able to stretch this out? It's 47 minutes in. What is this very last video? Watch before... Oh, I didn't watch it. I was supposed to watch this, so we're going to be virginal watching this right now. Okay, can you dig it? Oh, wait. I do actually think I... I watched this uh, sitting in the kava bar the other day because I had that note there to watch it before going live with it. So I did... After all, here we bring we bring it over there for you. Okay, this so this is a clip from Access Vegas where Myron and I think his name is Fresh. Is that dude's name Fresh? I hope I'm correct on that. They're there visiting Michael Sartain, Rolo Tomasi, and they're having an interesting combo. Let's roll with it. Yeah, I don't think women understand that the more money you make, the more status you have, the more clout you have, etc. It actually hurts you as a woman. A lot. Yeah, guys don't like that. Yes. Yeah. And you know what's funny? They won't tell you to your face. Yeah. You cheat on you or just do it behind mm -hmm. your back. Because they're like, you know what? Damn, she's doing this. All right, I'm going to do my thing. You know what guys really want? I want a girl that's low key, yeah. not a hoe, mm -hmm. young, nobody knows who she is, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, doesn't have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how much money she makes versus women want the opposite. They want a guy that has status, money, clout, experience, whatever. And I think the they biggest want mistake. They want a good mother. They want, they want, you, yes. most men who look at a woman, they yeah. look at them like, are you going to be a good partner? Like for me to like to lean on when something is wrong with my business or my life or like are you gonna be a good mother? Or mm. can you cook? Can you? Those are the, the feminine characteristics. Yeah, can you take nurturing. care? I actually have a yeah. funny story so, about this. So so guys don't care about a girl's status and money and clout. I know. My friend, so why'd you mention it when I asked you what you bring for? What you're redeeming? For, get her, Myron. For There's, myself, because again, keyword I for yourself, not for the man that wants for you. Yourself. Okay. For yourself. I, can, I am nurturing. I am other things, but I just feel like, I don't know. See, like in my head, the men in my life have always been like, I appreciate your work ethic and how well grounded you are and how driven you are to do things. And th this is what they said. So they were always like, I, I appreciate that? that about you. Yeah, hold on. I was Translation. About to, I was about here comes a good point he's going to make here. I seem to recall. I can't remember what it is. 
Go ahead. Listen, later. listen. So here's the thing, ladies. <laughs> you, you ladies, tell tell me if this has ever happened to you. Do you understand that as you get into these other things, like the second master's degree, you're making three hundred thousand dollars a year. You're still really pretty. Maybe you're in your late twenties, early thirties. The things men will say to have sexual exactly. intercourse with you, with no intention Anything. of being in a relationship. Uh, I I told a girl the other day that her hair looked nice. Uh, da- she had. I see her usually when her hair's up. But she had her hair down, and I said, oh, your hair looks good down. And it did. But it was like, um, it, it's just like the things guys say. I wanted to make her feel good, you know, because you're trying to, whatever. <laughs> it was not a neg, okay? And and her boyfriend was there, so it was like not as creepy as it sounds. But I was just like, ah, you're, and I was being honest. Her hair does look better down, but like I would, uh, guys will say shit to get laid. And it's like there's some latitude there about whether do they really mean what they're telling you now, lady, or uh, let's continue. Have you ever experienced that? A guy who's front to anybody? Uh, Katie, anybody? You guys have ex- ever but, experienced that? But these that? men are saying these things already like after I've dated them for no, no, a long no, no, time. No, 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 <laughs> what I'm saying is, Masha, I dude, dudes are going to do, hold on a second. Masha, dudes are going to do anything. Yeah, and they do. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck, bro. What the fuck? Right, right. But even with friend zone. Bro, you hear if a girl calls you bro or buddy, it's like over. You're friend zoned when you hear him say bro. I don't give a fuck, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh? Even when they're believable. <laughs> do you understand? So what happens is just think maybe not just you, but from a societal level. Side angle, I'm thinking I feel like she's gotten a little work like on her nose or something in her face. There's just something that feels a little unnatural to me there. All these women who are like, I fucked the power forward. Therefore, the power, the NBA power forward is the baseline for the man that I deserve from that point forward. Maybe not just you, but in general, yeah. uh, some other girls that are like this. And, and and then what happens from that point is now every other guy who does not meet that standard, there's just this little switch in their head. They're like, well, he makes less money than me and yeah. he's not six foot eight. And there's all these other problems. And it, we just become, we just become, we become, some women become delusional, for lack of a better term, yeah. for, for the idea of what it is that they can get. Because what they can fuck and what they can keep are two different things. But because the dudes will say fucking anything to have sex with you, you start to conflate <laughs> like these two that. things. And then that's where you end up with massive, you have, you have friends that are bottle servers and they just keep going after one bad dude after another. You've probably seen it over and over and they, you can't yes. figure it out. And it just, one guy's named Brock and the next, one, next one's named Kyler and Brock. the next, and like you look at him, you're like, dude, it's the same guy. You're, this guy's gonna fucking shit on you. You can tell, right? Whoops. No, you can't say that one. You can't say that one. You cannot say that one. We cannot say that one. Yeah, yeah, ladies, it's, it's well, very good simple. Points there. The Brock guy will say Vegas. anything. <laughs> the guy will say anything to appease your ego. So if you're a successful woman that makes a lot of money, he'll tell you, "Oh, it's so awesome that you're successful and make money." But he's gonna say whatever to fuck. Put it this yep. way. Yep. I think that's correct. He's, a guy doesn't take you serious until he gets on one knee and marries you. Done. No, uh, that's not true because in the process of mar- trying to marry a woman up, some guys are going to like go leaps and bounds over tall buildings to try and hook up with that lady. Oh my God, can I really be this? Can I really have made it through a show and actually have time left? That's because uh, up front I was like, I got to get to the rise sooner because I... um. I've been running out of time at the end, so now this one's totally imbalanced. And so what am I going to do? We're just going to go to a clip of Alyssa Milano right here really quick to make up for this. I started keeping notes for the next show, and she is so disturbing to me now at her age and stage. She is she is clown central in my view. Um, let's come over here real fast. Whee! Oh, that's not the one I want. Messed that up. But it was kind of interesting. Let's see how that looked. Uh, anyway, here's Alyssa Milano sounding mad crazy. Bitches! If you're gay, I want to follow you. If you're a lesbian, I want to oh, follow brother. you. If you're LGBTQ+, uh, I want to follow you. If you're trans, I want to follow you. If you're a drag queen, I want to follow you. I support everyone. So why is she act- why does she have that... Jewish sound on her now. This is well, this is a disturbed woman. Now is she just baiting people with this? I get it if you're being silly and you're baiting, but I don't know who she is. Let's watch it in slow mo then, shall we? Since we have time to kill. Hold on. Bitches, if you bitches. Okay, one moment, Alyssa. We're gonna watch. Oh, can we watch it in slow mo? Nope. 
Oh, yes, playback speed. We will cut it in half the time and annoy ourselves to death. This is a woman who could have who could have pointed me. Um, she could have made me stick my dick in a fucking snake hole, uh, whatever the hell that means. She'd be like, do that, and I'll be with you. And I would do something ridiculous when I was younger. But now I'm like, and she was so nice for so long, and now she's like mentally ill. Hollywood has that effect on people. The fucking mind virus got Alyssa Milano. Bitches! <laughs> it's funny or slow, Ma. follow you. If you're a lesbian, I want to follow you. <laughs> you sound drunk. It, it's more at, this is the real sound of Alyssa Milano. LGBTQ plus, I want to follow you. <laughs> if you're trans, you. I want to follow you. If you're a drag queen, I want to follow you. Yeah, I just virtue signaling. I support everyone. Support. Why do you say support? Bitches. Bitches. All right, enough, enough of that. My God, you drive me bananas, Alyssa. You've lost your mind. I'm sorry. I can't be much more kind than that. Um, where are we on time? 56? Oh, I'm going to start wrapping it up. I think that's that's good for the hour. <laughs> Exclamation point with Alyssa Milano at the end. <laughs> Cheers to Alyssa Milano. May she get her uh, brain back from the Hollywood's um, demons that stole it. She also got a couple abortions, and I think that's why she's a little bit, you know, ee, 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 Alyssa Milano, ee, 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 ee. Mm. Hydrate. All right, everybody, did you make it through this show all right? Let me just go up there and be like, hello, one last hello from over here. Ha, oh, this is Copy Who. If you enjoyed this show, I appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, if you like the videos, if you make comments, if you engage with me. Ask me what I think. I'll refer to your comment in the show. You can actually do that. You'll engage with me and I'll actually say something to you. Unlike Jedediah, I will talk to you directly because I have so few people uh, commenting on my stuff that I have to think of something. You yeah, know what I'm saying? All right, I'm really glad that I did this today. It's a pretty good timeline. I'll have to call my dad back. Remember, he called me during the show, and I have to call him back right now. Everybody, I always say this, and I actually do mean it, even though I mean to some people sometimes. It includes them. Peace be with you all. If you drag queen, follow me. If you're a trans, follow me. If you're gay, get away. No, just kidding. Not that there's anything wrong with that.